Um, thanks for being patient. Um, we're going to have some people join in as we all respond to these emails asking for the updated link. So let's go ahead and get it started. For those of you who are on the phone, um, we're working on getting chat enabled for all of you. There's also the Q&A box that will be used for questions um, for our panelists. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over um, to Courtney for some introductions. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm Courtney Little. I am one of the account executives here at Tableau. So why we're here today, um, if this is your first time to join us, um, this is a K-12 user group. So we really come together to just kind of see and understand, you know, everyone's use case in, in K-12. We're all family here. Um, so I'm excited today because I'm going to be introducing um, one of my um, K-12 accounts, El Paso ISD. Um, they're going to be sharing their use case with you guys, many of the, one of the many use cases they have. Um, but here's an example of our dedicated K-12 team map and what that looks like. So depending on where you're calling in from, um, you can see who your designated AE is from this, uh, this little slide here. So Kelly um, Rich, uh, she covers everyone that's in the green territory. Sarah Swanbeck, who is actually out on maternity leave, covers California as well as um, Canada. So if you need support from her, you reach out directly to me. I'm, I'm supporting her territory as she's out. Um, and then Cassie de Macias on the very right hand is our uh, fierce leader, our RVP. And then Matt Gagliardi, is, he covers all the blue area um, on the East Coast. And then I'll hand it over quickly to Sam Mickens, who supports our K-12 team. He's our solutions engineer. So Sam, do you want to say an introduction real quick? Hey, I'm just, my name is Sam Mickens. I'm a solutions engineer here with Tableau. Um, I've been here a little over six months and it is, uh, <clears throat> and I just love supporting um, um, our K-12 and um, educators when it comes to anything data related. Um, happy to be on the team and I'm here if anyone has any questions. Thanks, Sam. And then I cover everything that you can see here in the orange territory. Thank you, Courtney. All right, I am Stephanie Henry. I am one of your National K-12 TUG leadership members, committee members. Um, I work for a consulting firm called Plant Moran. Um, we use tab we support customers' use of Tableau all the way from strategy, planning roles, responsibilities, thinking about their infrastructure, data, and all of those great visualizations that Tableau is known for. Um, I downloaded Tableau, I think, 10 years ago um, around this season um, when I start, first kind of downloaded a pilot version um, that near and dear to my heart um, to help facilitate several user groups like this. Um, my role is just to help facilitate conversations, bring like-minded people together, um, and encourage relationship building um, among this great community. Um, and I'll hand it over to my colleague. Yep, thank you very much. Thomas Price, I'm a senior consultant for Slalom Consulting. We are a international technology and business consulting firm, but we work in a myriad of markets, including K-12 education as well as higher ed. Um, I've used Tableau for, I think I'm coming on seven years now, uh, maybe even longer. And it started out first working for a school district where I, I learned the ropes there. Um, and then I've since expanded my skill set while working with Slalom Consulting, where we worked and partner with uh, many organizations to help them either improve their infrastructure with Tableau or help them with strategy and all sorts of uh, great opportunities. But uh, I'm very excited today to introduce our agenda. And so we have quite the agenda. We have first Ruby Delgado and Albert Vega from El Paso ISD, who will be talking about leveraging Tableau to track attendance. Uh, then we'll be going on to our next section where it will be with Jessica, and she is going to be talking about space division enrollment in the curriculum there. And finally, we'll cap it off with Sam Mickens, who's gonna be just talking about what's new in Tableau. And then we'll, we'll end with some closing remarks uh, and updates. Just a, a quick reminder that we have the Q&A box that uh, some of y'all already used to let us know that the, the chat was not enabled initially. So if you do have questions during Ruby and Albert's or anyone else's presentations, I encourage, please, please put those questions there and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, otherwise, I will hand it over to El Paso ISD.
Well, good morning, everyone. So today's topic uh, for our presentation is going to be attendance and enrollment stabilization using Tableau here in EPISD. So my name is Ruby Delgado. I'm one of the senior data analysts here in the analytics department at El Paso Independent School District. We also have Albert Vega, also a senior data analyst, and he will be the one presenting the dashboards today related to this topic. So a little bit about us. Uh, we were established in 1883, 139 years ago. We're averaging about 50,000 students. We have 76 campuses. And down below, you'll see the different campus types that we have within that 76. We average about 9,000 employees, of which 4,000 are teachers. A little bit about our journey. So the district purchased Tableau back in 2016. We're currently averaging about 4,000 active users who are um, interacting who have an average interaction of 15,000 hits a, a month about. We are currently developing dashboards for all departments and campuses, and they're available to all employee levels, starting from the superintendent down to the teacher level. So a little bit about enrollment in line with um, national trends, we are on a pattern of decline. This information is um, in a snapshot form, and we can see that in the past 10 years, enrollment has dropped about 13,000 students with an average decrease of about 1,400 a year. Now this is a year over year comparison. This information is taken at a snapshot, which is our six week snapshot. You can also see that we um, took our hardest hit during the pandemic where we lost uh, about 4,500 students. So with what Ruby said, we have, um, we, we, we lose students um, year to year. And if we look year to year, um, that's just a snapshot in time. But as we move through the school year, we do know that we lose more than that, right? So as the school year progresses, we um, gain students and we lose students. But what we really wanted to focus on is how many students are we actually losing throughout the year? So as you see on the screen, um, we are averaging about 6,500 students um, we lose during the school year or do not return in the next um, year as we um, start new school years. And that does not include the graduates um, at the end of the year. So um, of those 6,400 students that we lost last year, 60% uh, of them were identified as at risk. Now, what we mean by at risk is that they, or for attendance, is that they are less than or equal to 90% attendance. Um, of those 60%, uh, their average attendance rate is 66.34%, or on average, they're missing 35 days of instruction or seven whole weeks. On the other side of things, those that aren't identified as at risk, their average attendance rate is 94%. So you can see there's a huge gap there in terms of attendance. So with uh, those numbers presented to um, senior leadership and to the superintendent, she decided that our goal for attendance or our, our cumulative attendance rate will be 94% from here on out. So we were tasked with the goal or a, uh, with uh, building a tool in Tableau that would allow uh, district uh, administration to achieve that goal. So I am going to jump into Tableau. So I'm gonna jump into our data lab. Um, down here in our student project folder, we have our attendance dashboard. You can see it's, it's pretty big, it's pretty massive. Um, I am going to click on this first tab. And this first tab is going to uh, immediately bring up our focus areas. Now, before I start the presentation on the dashboard, I just want to let everybody know that uh, this dashboard is completely anonymous. Um, all the information has been uh, uh, randomized. It is not real. That includes the uh, student names, student IDs, and the locations. So everything you see on here is fictitious but still based on a true story. Yes, true. So uh, with that said, um, as soon as a user signs into this dashboard, they will be, depending on their level of access, they will be uh, immediately directed to their campus. But in our case, we are district users. So 
we see everything at a high level. So uh, we're going to put our district uh, hat on and we are going to look at attendance at a district level. So immediately when you see uh, when you sign into this dashboard, what you see is our cumulative rate. So our cumulative rate of 92.78, that is um, uh, from the very first day of school to today. Um, immediately you see your highest absence rate or absence reason, which is illness followed by unverified. Uh, we can identify the grade with the lowest attendance rate. You can see ninth grade is highlighted in red here. We also have uh, identified the day of the week with the lowest attendance rate. So what administration or, or principals can do is find ways to incentivize coming to, uh, to school on Fridays. They can work on uh, different ways of doing that. Now, as a district user, we can immediately see who our highest uh, or lowest attendance rate campus is. In this case, LE Learning Center is 76.51. We can uh, immediately identify who the students with the highest unexcused absence rates here. Uh, also, those students with um, all absences, we can see who these kids are as well. And one of the things that we'll uh, touch on later on in the presentation is our way of analyzing or narrowing it down to uh, a neighborhood level. Um, so this dashboard not only uh, focuses at a high level, but down to the student level, but we also uh, wanted to find a way to focus on areas that need support. And in this case, we wanted to look at uh, neighborhoods. So. The first, first page I'm going to look at is our cumulative attendance rate, similar to that first page that you saw. This one covers uh, the cumulative attendance broken down by a grade type or a campus type. We also have the absence uh, or total absence rate and broken down as cam by campus type as well. And one of the things that we really want to focus on in this dashboard, if you look over here in the very top corner, we have this parameter that was built in with the superintendent's uh, uh, threshold that she identified of 94%. Um, this goal of 94% is uh, we're able to adjust it or, or uh, manipulate this, this number. For instance, if you're the campus with the 76% attendance rate and you needed, you wanted to give yourself a goal of 80, you can do that here. You can adjust that number and you can see everything in the dashboard changes. Um, but in this case, we're going to go back to 94. And I'm going to, uh, let me see here. There we go. Uh, besides looking at the uh, threshold, we can see that we have uh, a total number of campuses, or we identify the total number of campuses that have met that threshold. You can see in this case, we have 24 campuses that are at 94%. We also have identified those that are below. So we have 51 campuses below. Uh, we have by week, we can see how the attendance rate has gone from 97% in week one and has significantly dropped throughout the year and has started to slightly increase with the exception of this week where it's a drop down to 92%. We look at attendance period. We've also listed out the absence reasons, uh, starting with illness and unverified and so on. We've also identified those by grade level. Um, we do have that threshold here identified in the uh, red dotted line. Anything that meets or exceeds the 94% will be highlighted in green, and anything below will be in red. We've also ranked campuses by their attendance rate. So you can see the very top campus here. Um, ARIA Learning Center is at 97.06, well above the 94% threshold. But as we scroll down, you can see those campuses that have dropped down below it. Um, any of those campuses that need or need targeted support, we can identify those here. Our next page over here on the left-hand side is gonna be the year-over-year -year analysis. This is just a really high-level overview for the campuses to see how they've uh, fared in attendance throughout the years. Um, you can see our pandemic year really uh, impacted us, um, but you can also look at by semester, by attendance period, graded, grading period, and by week. The next page that we have is our weekday analysis. So this one uh, allows us to see which day um, really is impacted by attendance. So as, as always, you know, Friday is usually the huge indicator, but now what we've done is we've, we've uh, narrowed it down by campus. So you can scroll down here and you can easily identify which campuses have made the 94% 
threshold by year, and you can uh, easily identify those that haven't by looking at the ones that are in red. So this is a nice little feature for district users. Uh, campuses can use it as well, uh, but it just gives you a really good idea what days you can target. Uh, the next page that we have is our attendance trends. Now this looks at an every day or a daily analysis of their uh, attendance rate. You can see on day one, we were at 100%. And then as we flow through the year, we start to um, drop significantly. We also include the absence rate, uh, our membership, the unverified absences, which is basically unexcused. And we also look at those COVID related absences. Um, during the pandemic or the height of the pandemic, this is really utilized to identify those days. Um, in this case, it's still there um, and we can easily identify those peaks of um, anything related to COVID. The next page that we have is our campus ranking. Now this view was developed in order to show progress toward the superintendent's goal of 94%. This allows uh, district officials along with the campuses to see where they fall uh, as compared to their peers. Are they in the running? Um, with this 94% goal that was set by the superintendent, there are also rewards and incentives tied to it. So in order to track that, uh, we created this viz that basically ranks the campuses and shows their attendance rate up through you know, the latest day of instruction, which is the 42nd day of instruction in this case, um, shows their attendance rate, and it's broken up by those different campus types. So in the end of the period, a campus is selected from each of these types in order to provide that reward. And so it's just a nice little view to see, you know, where do I stand? Am I in the running? Um, you know, what can I do to help improve my attendance rate? Um, in order to achieve you know, that, that number one rank in order to receive the reward. So similar to what Ruby just stated about the campuses um, uh, being incentivized in terms of trying to reach that 94% or you know, looking for those campuses with the highest percentage of attendance rate, um, the campuses are doing the same thing. So we've developed a page that allows the campuses to easily identify those campuses or those students that have the highest attendance rate. So um, in this case, I'm gonna pretend to be a principal. I am gonna go down here to uh, Chaos Elementary and you can see as soon as it filters out, um, me as the principal, I can easily identify the um, students that have perfect attendance. Um, you can see those that have met the 94% threshold that the superintendent has identified. And we also have identified those students that are determined at risk or that have a 90% or less uh, attendance rate. So you can scroll through here and you can see those students with the 100%. You can also see those that start to have a absence, uh, count of absences, and you can scroll down, you can easily identify those students that need support. Uh, another thing that we've also implemented in here, if the campuses want to identify who uh, those 100% uh, students or the students with perfect attendance, they can easily select that here in the filter. As soon as that filters out, they can click on this uh, download icon and download all of the students that have perfect attendance and they can um, go in and uh, uh, give out awards or they can also identify those students that are at risk. They can download those students as well and they also can uh, uh, do targeted support. The, uh, I'm going to jump into this next one and this, this uh, sheet was developed uh, for the district during the height of the pandemic. Now we had some days where our attendance rates were down uh, in the 60s and in the 50s. And so the district really wanted to identify those days that uh, met those uh, limits or, or dropped below those limits. So during the pandemic, uh, we had uh, a rate, I believe we we're looking at about 50 or 60. We wanted to easily identify what days those were or what campuses were, were hitting those. So in this case, I've dropped the attendance threshold down to 80. And as I scroll through here, um, you can see that most of the campuses or all the campuses have met that threshold with the exception of a handful here. Those campuses are highlighted in red and they're marked right away so you can identify who they are. Um, you can see what day it is. 
uh, by default, this dashboard or this page is uh, set to the last 10 instructional days, uh, but you can uh, select any date range that you wish. As you uh, adjust the attendance threshold, you can see that those days light up when they do not meet whatever number you put in the threshold. So I'm going to jump over back to 94%. And I will uh, jump over to a dashboard that we developed or a page that we developed using some mapping. So what we wanted to do, uh, El Paso ISD is an open enrollment uh, district, so meaning that anybody can attend any campus that they wish. So that makes uh, it difficult to identify uh, within their boundary how many students uh, you know, have absences or, is it, or if we were to highlight just that attendance boundary, it doesn't necessarily reflect uh, how many kids are living in that area. So we decided to develop a dashboard that shows a higher concentration of uh, student absences based on the student address. So we've developed this dashboard here and you can see the uh, higher concentration of attendance or absences is uh, reflected here in these dark areas. So I'm going to put my uh, my principal hat on again, and I'm going to go look at Chaos High School, and I'm going to show you a uh, what it looks like for the campus. So when the campus signs in, they're going to see, look at all these students spread out all over the city, and they're attending their campus. And you see this one little high area or concentration of high absence rates. So I'm going to show the boundary for this campus. As I show the boundary, you can see how many students do not uh, live in that boundary. So it's just another tool for them to identify those students, to see how many students actually live outside of their, uh, their attendance zone. Well, another nice thing about this is we can highlight that high concentration of uh, attendance or absences, and you can see the data automatically changes. You can see what I selected in this area, the students I selected. Uh, their attendance rate is 88.73. Um, there's 260 students that I selected. And out of those 260 students, we have about 1,184 absences between them all. So it's just another tool to give us a good idea of what's going on in terms of attendance. And finally, this last dashboard that we've uh, developed, and this is uh, similar to what we uh, showed you on that focus area dash or page. This is to look at our neighborhoods. So what neighborhoods are areas of concern? What, where can we uh, focus targeted support or send uh, support out, home visits, uh, community uh, uh, support or, or engagement, something uh, of, to that effect. So if I click on the city block here, you'll see that the dashboard is gonna narrow down to that neighborhood. Um, it's gonna show me their uh, attendance rate for that neighborhood. It's gonna say how many students live here. So in this case, I'm still at Chaos High School and the neighborhood for this campus uh, has 66 students. 61 of the 66 have absences totaling about 354 absences. Now remember, this is at the campus level. If we were to look at it at the district level, it takes a little bit longer to load, but you can really get an idea of what neighborhoods need that targeted support. In this case, I believe it might be a uh, lower income area possibly, or an apartment complex. So we can send a team out there to do some, uh, knock on some doors, see where the students are. Um, Another issue, another thing that we've developed in here is the download button as well. If they need to download these students, they can click on the download button. It'll give all the contact information, the address, the phone number, the parent name, uh, so they can make those phone calls and they can make those uh, house visits. Uh, one of the other things that we've developed here uh, with all of our dashboards, what we like to do is we like to focus on sending Tableau to the user when the user cannot get to Tableau. So this case, what you see here is a weekly reminder that goes out on Monday to principals. It gives them their previous week uh, attendance rate. It gives them uh, their cumulative, how many absences there were or what their attendance was. Um, it gives us their highest uh, absence reason. Um, 
it, what, one of the other things that we like to do is give them what was their highest attendance rate or lowest attendance uh, rate for the week, uh, for the weekday. And you can see in this case, last week was Monday. There wasn't, there wasn't any classes on Friday. So the lowest day of the week was Monday. Maybe they can research and figure out what's going on there. Uh, the lowest grade level, we also have the students with the highest uh, absence rate for that, that week. And then we also, just like we did in the other ones, we show the targeted uh, neighborhood that may need some, uh, some support. In this case, for one week, there were 124 absences just in that, that neighborhood. The other dashboard that, or the other page that we like to send to the user's uh, inbox is a weekly reminder. Um, so that one is, or a daily reminder, I'm sorry. So when the, uh, every morning, the attendance clerks, the, uh, the administrators, they receive an email in their inbox that shows how many students have excessive absences, three or more, 10 or more. There's also some age uh, breakdowns here. So we see the four through 18 year olds and we also have some 19 year olds in here. Um, all of that information is sent on a daily basis. It just allows them to um, get more targeted or, or uh, focus on some of those kids. And as, as they get this in their email, they can click on it. It'll take them directly to this page. They can click on any of these icons. It'll take them directly to the dashboard so they can go in there and find out who these students are and um, take it from there and, and just provide support to the campuses. Hopefully, they can use this tool to help them um, increase their uh, their attendance rates, uh, reduce the amount of unexcused absences, and hopefully uh, get some students back in the seats uh, at the campuses. So that's our dashboard in a nutshell. Um, I believe if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask away. Yeah, and I think um, Ruby's been doing a really great job at answering quite a few of those questions. I did. I think I did see a couple questions popped into the chat. So this one's from Helen. So is this dashboard a platform in addition to other platforms such as on data suite offered in the district for attendance tracking, or is this it? Uh, I'm trying to see if this is a supplement or the main source. Okay, so this has become the main source for, for attendance. Um, ever since the superintendent did set that goal of 94, 94%, um, we were asked to build a single source, right? Um, so instead of having administrators or senior leadership go to different sources, they said, let's build one that provides all of the information necessary in order to uh, pave that path toward that goal. And so this is, um, this is the tool used for attendance. As of now, we do have additional platforms. We do have on data suite. However, this is the identified source for attendance. Perfect. So then we have an another question here in the box uh, from David Furlow. Is this pulling from a warehouse or of assembled data or is it unioning multiple SISs? So we currently use one SIS and we use frontline. Um, the data is we have an ETL process that runs overnight. Of course, everybody knows that um, attendance data is a massive data set, um, especially when you take it down to the student level like we have. Um, so this is a lengthy process, um, especially when we get towards the end of the year to process all of those attendance records. And as you know, attendance isn't set in stone because a student can miss today. Next week, they can bring in their note. Um, and if they bring in that note, well, the, the attendance clerk has to change that record. So that process runs overnight. It puts it into a uh, data warehouse, per se, that we have. Um, once that's loaded in there, then Tableau runs the extract and brings it into here. So um, we're not hitting directly from the SIS and we're not unioning multi multiple SISs, but we are doing an ETL process to massage the data to get it into our uh, data warehouse. Perfect. Um, so we have one from Don. Do you consider attendance for each class or just daily? So we are working on that. Um, when we first implemented this dashboard, uh, it was about four, I believe, four sheets or, or four different visits. Um, and as we started to roll this out, you know, we had a need for this and then we had a need for that. And so it has expanded into this um, 
massive dashboard. Um, the next step is for us to take it down to the classroom level. Uh, we have that information already loaded in here. Now it's just a matter of building the viz. When we do that, uh, we are going to use real level security so teachers will be able to sign in here and they will be able to see the attendance in their classroom so uh, administrators can sign in they can see all their classes in the campus uh, they can see which ones have the highest and lowest attendance rates and then the teacher can sign in and they can see their attendance rate of the students as well so we're getting there this is this dashboard is fresh we just developed it it's only been out a few weeks um, and it is continuing to grow. Um, I think it's going to grow too much uh, where we may have to split this up, but um, the classroom level is on our radar and we're working on it. However, this is taking the, that significant period where attendance is taken. Um, so th I think that's where, where Albert is going is it currently shows one period for the attendance. However, he is working to integrate the additional periods, um, you know, especially for secondary. Definitely. And yeah, that teacher level views are always, always uh, a big lift, but cannot have a huge impact in any organization. Thank you. Um, so this is from Rose. What are you using for your data warehouse? So for our data warehouse, um, I believe we're using a MariaDB. Um, it's just a, a, it's just a database um, and that's it. Uh, so we have a, uh, we have a read-only section of that database that is run, uh, that is loaded with the ODS or the um, data directly from the uh, SIS. We read that data. That's what we use to process everything on our ETL process. Um, and then we have a write uh, database that we're allowed to write our data for this uh, particular dashboard or any of our dashboards. Um, and so it, it's just a it's just a database. It isn't a any specific platform. Um, but it is, uh, it is a massive database now. Uh, we are loading a lot of data daily, nightly, like Ruby had mentioned before. We're developing dashboards from the superintendent level down to the teacher level. So uh, you can imagine how much data that is uh, being loaded on a nightly or even hourly basis, depending on the dashboard. So it isn't anything significant. It's just homegrown. Um, and that's uh, how we load all of our information. Awesome. And I think we have one last piece from Stephanie who, yep, I can't add to Q&A Q &A either, but so can you talk through the, the neighborhood biz uh, as in like the shape files, lat long per student and, and all that? Sure. So um, we do have a, every uh, uh, student uh, address is geocoded, obviously. Um, and anything that is not geocoded, we run a process on our own. Uh, using uh, our ETL process to geocode those, so we we can uh, we have a Latin long for every single student. At that point, what we do uh, is we've pulled from the Census Bureau. We use these Tiger Line uh, uh, shape files that maps every single neighborhood in the in the city. Um, as we go through um, the ETL process, it plots every single. Uh, every single student address within that uh, within that neighborhood so that way we can I, we can I tie the id of that neighborhood to the student so that way when we bring up the dashboard uh, the dashboard uh, can automatically identify what neighborhoods are uh, at risk or have those high uh, attendance rates and then we're able to display them on the screen um, so it's a combination of multiple um, the processes that we have to run. Uh, we run them on a nightly basis. Um, of course, we don't run every single address every single night. Uh, we only run those that have not been geocoded. Um, you can imagine the heavy lift that has on our servers, um, especially uh, Tableau right now. Like right now, we're, we're having to load um, these uh, neighborhood files, um, all of those neighborhood files in this dashboard. It, it is a heavy lift. So um, that's why some of these uh, pages take a long time to load, especially at a district level. Now, when the campuses come in and they sign in, um, it, it runs a lot quicker because it only loads their information. So um, it, it is it is a lengthy process. I don't know if you guys want to uh, to see those shape or how we've mapped those shape files in Tableau. Um, so let me see. Let me go to this sheet. Um, so you can see 
uh, we've brought in the geometry or the shape file for each of those campuses, all of or each of those students. Each student is tied to a uh, to a shape file. So uh, depending on what the user selects, that lat long is is uh, populated here inside the shape file. So there shouldn't be anything outside. Uh, the process that we use is done in Altrix to pinpoint each of those locations um, within the boundary file. That's what will identify and populate it into the database for us. So, got it. And just the last couple questions, and, and just that way I don't miss it. Um, if you do have a question, we see, we always make sure we get a notification if we if it's put in the QA box. But um, just pulling from the chat, so. Uh, what was the timeline for the the build of these dashboards? Um, and then do you have, this is multiple parts, do you have ownership of the dashboard, including like refresh and loading the data? Or, and then in addition to attendance, what else has your district migrated from other platforms to Tableau dashboards? So timelines, <laughs> I mean, I think everyone um, knows and understands that in a school district, um, most of these requests are, you know, we need it yesterday, we need it in the next five minutes, we need it, you know, now. Um, we're sitting in a, in a board meeting, we're sitting in the superintendent's meeting, we need, you know, we need the information now. So the timelines are quite short. Um, this one, uh, what was it, Albert? About two, three weeks. But that, that I mean, that was a very short timeline to, to come up with something like this. I mean, we really did have to put in some, some time and effort in here. Um, as far as ownership of the dashboards, including refresh, refreshing and loading, yes, we have complete ownership of the dashboard, of the data prep, of the data load, of the schedules of the data prep, the schedule for the extract refresh in Tableau. Um, in addition to attendance, what else have we migrated? Um, so, you know, now that the users are familiar with and see how easy it is to filter through data, to analyze data, um, to look at data, um, we have had requests to transition, you know, as much as possible into Tableau to create that single source of information to, you know, avoid having users having to go to multiple platforms in order to access information. So we've, you know, migrated things over such as, um, I think an example will be teacher evaluation. That is um, a separate platform. However, all of their tracking monitoring information is in a Tableau dashboard. Um, student attendance is in here. Student grades is in Tableau. Um, fi financial information. I mean, we've really touched on almost every department in the district in order to pr help provide information in a visual format. You know, that's easy to digest. So we've got human resources, finance, um, student parent services. Uh, what am I missing? Um, I mean, everything and everything. Everything is just migrating to Tableau at this point. Got it. And uh, so here's one from Marshall. And we actually do, we have a little bit of time left, but um, so I, the, Marshall noticed that each view is loading fairly quickly. What's the data source as in like what joins or queries and analysis practices? Uh, so what, what's, the, what's the data source and analysis practices are important to helping you maximize Tableau's performance and efficiency? I think we discovered that um, the data prep is, you know, one of the most important pieces is how you piece together all of the information. Um, like Albert mentioned, we have a uh, portion of our data warehouse where we're able to write. So we prep all of our data in a platform um, outside of Tableau to, you know, either pre-calculate a lot of the information or, you know, just prep it in the right manner that Tableau can, can read and access and support. And then we plug that in into Tableau and create, you know, any additional calculations that we weren't able to do in the data prep process. But data prep really is where we focus a lot of our time and energy to ensure that our, our visits are running as efficient as possible. And I think um, Albert can speak to um, what sources he used here. 
Yeah, so um, Ruby's right. I, you know, when you're using a database that has uh, five years worth of attendance and you're looking at about 8 million records each, um, eight to nine or 10 million uh, records each, this database uh, or this uh, table that we use for this dashboard has over 50 million records. So uh, hence the, the, um, the long querying time here. But um, I was going to go to the data source so you could see how we've mapped it out. So we've learned that we got to do as much heavy lifting outside of Tableau before we bring something this big in here. Um, and and it's it, it takes some time to get it to run quickly. Um, we do have uh, some some of the the views they run a little bit slower, especially the ones that are uh, that inc uh, incorporate the mapping uh, because it's bringing in all those different shape files. Um, the way that we link the data in, in the data source is we try to do or try to uh, avoid doing uh, direct, I, I can't remember what the term was, uh, uh, direct links to the data. We want to use the noodle when you drag and stuff, drag stuff into the data source. So it reduces the load time. Um, the relationships versus the relationships. The Correct. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, you, you just have to make sure that whatever it is that you're bringing in here, um, if it's a smaller data source, then yeah, you can do some of those calculations inside of Tableau. Um, if you're going to be doing a lot of calculations on a massive data set like this, um, I would recommend doing it outside in Tableau prep or whatever ETL process that you have to massage the data, do those calculations, um, do them outside before you bring them in. Um, in this case, uh, a lot of the calculations have to be done in Tableau because we are at the student level. So you have to take that into consideration. So we could have easily done this at the high level or at the um, aggregate level for the district or the campus. It would make the dashboard a lot quicker. Um, but in this case, uh, administration, uh, principals, teachers, they want to see those students. They want to identify who those students are who need that targeted support. Um, that's why we've developed it this way. Of course, it does take a little while to load, um, especially on the back end. You can see this is how we've done some of our uh, some of our mapping here. Uh, we have all of our shape files. We're using multiple shape files in order to do uh, mimic overlays and and different uh, effects like that. Um, if we do direct relationships uh, by location ID or any of that, uh, we do run into issues because then we won't be able to display uh, based on the students enrollment. So we have to be very careful how we uh, how we map everything within Tableau. So uh, like Ruby said, do all your heavy lifting uh, outside of Tableau before you bring it in, because with data sets this massive, you're going to run into performance issues. Perfect. And then last question, and then afterwards we'll transition over to our next speaker. But if y'all do have questions, feel free to add them to the QA box and Ruby or Albert can answer them um, just through the typing. So how do you get the bar charts inside the tooltips whenever you're mousing over those neighborhoods? Oh, easy. Okay, so let me let me jump over there and see if I can show you. I believe so, it's called a viz in tooltip. Viz right? in tooltip, yes. <laughs> so I think because I clicked on, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, we're good. Um, let me go to the sheet. And um, obviously all you have to really do is develop a, a sheet that has the bar charts in it. Um, displaying the information that you need, leave it in aggregate. Um, you know, you don't really have to put any filters in there unless you're only showing something uh, specific. In this case, all we did was we uh, developed a bar chart that shows the count of absences and the attendance rate by campus. So we developed that sheet first. And then all we do is we go into the tooltip and then we uh, click on insert up here at the top where it says sheets, we select the sheet that we just uh, created. So in this case, normally what we do is we name them tooltip, give it a, a preface it with a, uh, an easy way to identify because when you're working in a, a dashboard this massive, you're gonna have uh, you know quite a few sheets. The easiest way to identify it is by giving it a name of tooltip. We click on that. We import it here. In this case, I didn't do a good job of naming it. I named it sheet 46. I think I was in a hurry. I believe we were presenting it and they wanted it right away. So I, I just threw it in here before I published it. Once you do that, you hit okay. 
um, and then it narrows down uh, by itself by filtering all fields, it looks at that uh, uh, that neighborhood code or that uh, um, address code, and it ties it directly to that sheet. So as we uh, navigate through the different neighborhoods, you can see the numbers will change um, depending on, on what you have selected on the screen. So it's a simple process. Uh, Tableau's made it extremely easy to do business tooltips. We like to utilize those, especially in, in business like this, where there's just a little bit more information you want to show. Uh, uh, Viz and Tooltip is, is a great, uh, great way to do that. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. This was fantastic. Um, love the, the shape file piece. I've always loved the, whenever you're able to incorporate really cool map visuals into dashboards. Uh, once again, if y'all do have questions, you can still type them into the QA box and uh, we can answer they, those answers. Those can be answered while we go to our next presenter, Jessica. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to come today. So I really wanted to talk to you. Um, my name is Jessica Lyons. I am the program manager for Tableau for Teaching. And our curriculum manager who was not able to make it today, he has um, just started and he's made some fabulous assignments. So I just wanted to share just how we can leverage this in the K-12 space. And so really quickly, I'll just share my screen a little bit. Um, one is that we are from the program for Tableau for Teaching. I'll put the link in the box, but we have curriculum as well. And we are working with places like UCube. Um, we also work with the Girl Scouts. We work with a lot of K-12 organizations. Awesome. And in those organizations, we do actually awesome. give uh, the oh, curriculum can, and they can be leveraged in that on. space. And so we do have about 10 modules. And what we'll be talking about today is our new NASA program. So we have our space division data project. And this is what it looks like. So this is just a one, sh a one sheet or paint pretty much about it. So it's a great introduction to data skills in Tableau. It provides students with a guided practice on like exploring a standard data set. It provides the students with guided practice, including YouTube videos for actually building data visualizations using Tableau. Um, it also gives them fun scenarios um, as a data analyst. So as you can see in one of the things, it basically gives them a little bit of that project base and gives them that idea of if you were hired as a new data analyst, this is one of the projects that you could possibly have. It's a great way to also introduce like statistics for students as well. And so you can integrate it in math, you can integrate it in the social sciences classes. Um, as well. It can also be imported into any LMS system. So if you have Canvas on campus or if you have any other type of LMS, you can literally drop, drop it um, in a Dropbox and you can get it that way as well. And so we just wanted to let you know about this great um, module. We've had already some feedback from several K-12 schools in addition to those university after-school programs or those math programs. And people have said that they absolutely have loved using it. And I just appreciate the time to being able to share a little bit about it. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns that I can answer at this time? Um, to get access of it. So absolutely under our Tableau for Teaching page, um, you can get access to all of our curriculum. So as a matter of fact, as K-12 educators, you absolutely get a license for free for Tableau for Teaching. Again, this one is provisioned for you for teaching purposes, not for your like enrollment data or anything like that, but this is for teaching purposes. It comes with e-learning as well. So you can request and get a free license. Once you get that free license, you can absolutely um, get the ready-made course curricula. The other thing that a lot of K-12 educators are not really privy to is that we also do have course software. So if you wanna actually add um, students and have course software, you can get that as well for completely free. So we do have course software that will give you the student bulk licenses or Tableau Cloud. In addition to, you can always use uh, Tableau Public. I always uh, have K-12 teachers just be very careful with Tableau Public, especially when you have students uploading their data. It is great for them to be exposed 
However, at the same time, like be very careful about that PII information or personal identifiable information that could be shared by students. Um, so we do have the Tableau Cloud site. We do have student bulk keys that you can actually upload your students into and then they can use it. Anyone that is the age of 16 and older, they can absolutely get a free student license on our free student license page. So if you are 16 and older, you can get a free uh, student license as well. I will put all of those links inside of uh, the chat. And I'm just checking the chat to see if there's any other questions. And yes, I will share the link now. All right, um, thank you so much, Jessica. It's, anything else or are we good to transition to our next speaker? We are good to transition. Awesome, well, I'll hand it off to Sam who is going to be talking about Tableau What's New. Hello everyone, um, could everybody hear me? Thumbs up, say something in the chat. All right. I am going to share my screen for one moment. All right, if everyone can see my my screen, um, I'm I'm going to talk about you know what's new with Tableau, but um, I want to you know kind of stay in um, <clears throat> based off some of the things that we went over. Um, um, you know, in this presentation and some of the things that um, Albert and Ruby, you know, about because they're awesome users over um, over at El Paso. And I'm actually working with you know, right now on, you know, how to optimize and, and do some performance with things. But if you just saw the wonderful presentation, you know, that they did, one of the key um, add-ons, you know, that we have here at, at Tableau is called data management, right? And, you know, it's an add-on. I don't necessarily consider it an add-on at all, consider it as a necessity, because if you saw how, you know, complex their environment was, how they built it up, how they scaled it out, and how it was handling multiple things, imagine logging onto your environment and, and having to figure out, hey, what data sources that we have, what type of data sources that, that they are, how many people are connected with the management add-on, right, as soon as you log into your Tableau environment, like I'm right here, one of the key quick pieces is if I click right here on external assets, what this does, it, it, it automatically tells us how many or what data sources are connected to our environment that we have. And what I mean by that is, so we see right here inside of our Tableau environment that I have a data source student or, you know, a database data source to, to call student. And initially, by looking at it, I can say, hey, this is a SQL Server database. I can see something as a text file. I can see something as a Google Sheets. This will show every type of connection or every data source that they're inside of their little conglomerate of data inside of their organization, right, at one glance. And it doesn't just do that. If we look at it, you know, um, at, you know, at a detailed level, so I'm just going to click on <clears throat> this um, database or data source right here. And right now inside of our um and, and this external assets inside of data management i can say that hey this is one data source it has um 12 workbooks connected to it has 176 sheets and it is used by 26 dashboards 26 dashboards and a good thing about that is i know that hey if i make a change or if i need something this is working with 26 different dashboards and they did a good and it's, it's a good job by having one data source and connected to multiple dashboards as opposed to every time you're building a dashboard some people or some users they will publish the same data source multiple times right and if that sometimes causes um, performance issues but by having this data management necessity i'm not going to use the word add-on you can go in and you can see that hey I can go here, I can see this is the sheet name, I can say that, hey, these are some of the columns, these are the workbooks. I can click on the dashboard link and actually go right here and see the dashboard itself that that database or data source is tied to. Right here with, um, not a good example, but right here inside of the, the um, our um, um, 
external assets using the data management add-on. But I'm going to click back into this data source. If, if, if you're working with the data source, right? Or if you're working with the database, and let's say you're going to make a change to it, right? I see that, you know what, there are 10 different owners that are working on this data source or database or, or whatever. I can easily, if I'm going to make a change to say, you know what, we did something with the prints, we didn't like how it was running. And I have 10 different people that were um, a part of, um, you know, or using this data source. I can quickly send an email or a notification out hey Allie or hey Ruby hey hey um you know hey Albert um we made a change to the data source sticking something out there and I could send a message off right here from inside of um inside of um um, um you know this field using a, the 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 uh, data management um necessity not add-on even though it's an add-on right here right also, um, with data management, um, like I say, a you know, very powerful tool. If I go to any one of my dashboards, and I'm just going to pick up, you know, this is just a K-12, you know, discipline data sample set that we have right here. Let's say if I'm using this, or if I'm a user, and I'm trying to figure out, hey, you know, what is the usage? Like, what's going on in here? I want to, or, or what did I use to create one of these charts? Right here in real time, inside of um, our actual viz, if you click on data details, what it'll automatically show you is, hey, this is how many views dashboards have. This is a name of the workbook. This is the owner. This is the last time it was mod um, if it was modified. And this is one of the real good, you know, that I love so much um, about the data source, uh, data management add-on or necessity is that sometimes you build stuff and. Ruby and Albert can tell we, we work so much. And like the example that he just showed you when he was um, making a visualization and he made um, you know, made a change inside of um the tool tip or whatnot. If I'm looking at the actual elements or attributes and fields that made up my dashboard, I can see everything right here. So if I click on one of these attributes, I can actually see the formula tied to whatever attribute that it is inside of the viz. So if I click, you know, view more, I can say that, hey, the type, whether the string, the row, dimension, here's the actual formula myself, and I can see, all right, that's what I did. And I didn't have to go looking or remember right inside of the data, you know, right inside of the actual um, visualization. Questions, anybody so far, where I'm at with, with data management? Anything in the chat? I don't see anything. Okay. So also using, um, also with our, um, you, you know, using data management, um, it's not just a, a a catalog or a feature to show everything that you have connection. It doesn't just break down and show you what's going on, you know, inside of um, the viz or elements or whatnot. What it also does is it helps you troubleshoot um you know performance or whatnot and with scheduling if i'm not mistaken marshall said hey what are some of the what are some of the um good ways to make sure i'm using good performance or whatnot right in order to get information from our warehouse from a data warehouse from um a sheet right we have to publish a data source right and if we are publishing a a I'll actually go right to the um, flow. If you are, if we're taking some information, you know, out of a, um, a data source and, you know, we're using an ETL tool, Tableau Prep Builder is my ETL tool of, of choice. The, the great thing about the data management add-on is one of our flows, I'm just going to pick this flow, Tableau School District, right? This is saying, hey, I'm pulling the information from our Tableau District um um data source i'm doing something with it i'm massaging it i like to call data a pig so we're putting makeup on the pig or addressing the data because previously before etl tools you know you know were real big we spend most of our time fixing and massaging the data but once i massage the data and i publish the data up to the data source with this add-on you can schedule your refreshes or, or your extracts so i can say hey this data that is coming from Snowflake, that is coming from SQL Server, it's already connected, right? Um, since I have that, since I have management, and I have the, not, and not the add-on, I have the data um, management necessity, right? I can say, I want to, I want to schedule 
and start a new task to say that this thing is fully refreshed every month, every day, every hour at a certain time, whatever type of schedule that I created. And all I would have to do is click here, click create task, and it will actually schedule. So if I know I needed this, this, this data to be refreshed every day at one o'clock or every week at one o'clock, I set it and it will automatically reschedule as opposed to someone having to go ahead and, up, and publish and upload um, um, new data in order to um, repopulate the data stores to the vids. Imagine how time this, you know, this saves automatically. And it's not bringing, and it's not, and, and it's not bringing the whole entire, you know, data set over with the bazillion rows. It's bringing over what you schedule, the new information that you want to have published. So it sometimes it helps improve performance and things of that such. Two other quick things that I'm, I'm just going to kind of talk about and not get into is with data management is um, centralized row level security, which, which. Previously, if you don't have the data um, management necessity, um, you would have to actually, you would have to um, perform your centralized, um, your role level security on the individual workbook. And what I mean by that is, hey, each one workbook that I have, I would have to say, hey, if I want someone to view only this amount of data, if you're a teacher or if you're an administrator, I would have to perform it on each workbook. But with the data and with the data management necessity that we have, you can now perform that at the database level to say, hey, whenever, you know, Miss Pink third grade logs in, she'll have access to whatever dashboards that she's want at the viewing level that that one has. Good. Thumbs up, thumbs down. We think it's a necessity. Questions, anybody? Anyone? So, you know, just, you know, just quickly without I don't see questions, um, but just quick, uh, here's the question. All right, well, just quickly without uh, um, seeing, you know, a bunch of questions, what we've learned is with uh, with data management, you can quickly at a glance, you know, click on a turtle app and see your entire organization scheme, what you need to do with them, you have to access them, who built them, how to communicate with them, how to get into the details of, you know, what's going on. We also learned that, we can um, schedule flows or schedule our um, data that we uploaded to the server, right? In order to um, or improve performance. And we don't have to uh, publish multiple data sources or embed data sources into each dashboard that we have. If we publish data sources to the server, anyone can, you know, with the right permission to that same data, data source and that actually improves performance. And this is all a part of the management or necessity. I hate saying that on what we call it, but it's actually a necessity because it makes your whole entire transition not only smooth, but it makes it accessible to everyone of your organization. Thus far, any more questions? It's pretty much all I have right now around the you know, what we're using for management. But what data management does it it makes you know your life and your flow, you know, for your organization so much easier. Um oh I'll just I'll, I'll just share share one thing. Right now in the um you know in one of the one thing that I'm excited Oh, and I didn't allude to this. Uh, I didn't allude to this earlier. Is um, um, I came over from K twelve, right? And I had eighteen years at Grand Rapids, right? And before, actually, when I was you know in K twelve, before we actually um, had Tableau, and um, I was building a lot of quick and dirties and trying to come up with visualizations or whatnot. And then once we had, you know, Tableau, a new feature, you know, that is out now um, that is coming out is called advanced management. And what advanced management does, it, it gives you the opportunity to say, hey, 
workbook is performing poor, performing um, poorly, and this is the reason why. Um, most of our users log on six in the morning or two in the morning. You have an extract refresh schedule that you that you've created, but you have ten or twelve refresh schedules running at the same time. If you stagger them out at different times, then when you do that, it'll also help you promote um, improve performance. It's just like scope on your data and a Microsoft on your organization and, and, and it'll let you know how um, make sure you're um, you're keeping back best practices aligned. So I'm a big fan of advanced management. I'm a big fan of data management. And when you use them all together, it'll just make your visualization process where you're actually building visits, analyzing data, as opposed to troubleshooting and trying to figure out what's what. So um, I'll stop talking. And I'll pass it back to my team. If we have any more questions, um, feel free to add. And I'll drop my information in the chat. So if anyone wants to email me directly with any technical questions or just, you know, um, how tos, I'll feel free to um, at any time answer. Thank you, Sam. Um, you provided a lot of great behind the scenes on data management um, and some of the new capabilities. So we appreciate you pulling that presentation together for us. All right, and Sam did put his email over in the chat. So if you all have follow-up questions for Sam, um, he'd be happy to answer those. Um, so we just have one slide uh, to kind of wrap us up today. Um, we have two meetings that are scheduled out in the future. Um, our winter meeting will be January 25th in spring and April 19th. So those are tentative. Um, so sometimes they get moved based on if there's large Salesforce or Tableau events. But right now we have those two dates on hold. Um, same time, same place. Um, and I appreciate you all being patient at the start of the call. It looks like there was some change in um, how things were provisioned this round. Um, so we are grateful that you all were able to, to get through. Um, but it's unfortunate that we had 100 people who were kind of blocked out. So um, this recording will be sent out in a few days. It is posted to the, the Tableau YouTube site. Um, so you can all go and, and revisit all of those um, great sessions that we had today. If you have any questions, please reach out to Thomas and myself. Um, if you have uh, would like or inspired to present at a future meeting, again, case studies, what you've been working on, um, a skill set that you just love and you'd love to teach everyone on the call. Um, could talk data, could talk business. So we are open to anything. So reach out if uh, to Thomas or myself if you'd like to present at a future. Um, Thomas, I'll also just let you say thank you before we close out. There we go, find the unmute button, right? Um, no, thanks again so much, y'all. This was wonderful presentations by everyone. So thank you again to all of our presenters today. I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation and I look forward to seeing all of y'all at our next K-12 tug. Thanks everyone.